Hi friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. My name is Rachel. How are we? And welcome to a video that I'm very nervous to film. I have to be honest with you. In today's video, I'm going to be reacting to my 2023 TBR, specifically a video that I made in December 2022 called 23 books that I want to read in 2023. The purpose of that video is basically just to kind of look ahead at what my reading year is going to be. And I selected 23 books that I thought I would read, that I had all the hope and good intention in the world that I would end up picking up. So a couple of things about this video. Number one, I have not watched it since I uploaded it, okay? Like, I do not remember any of the books that are in this video that are on this list. So we're gonna find that out together. And number two, I do remember when I made this video, I just like looked at my bookshelves and I picked 23 books off of them. And I was like, yeah, I'll read these. I'll put these in this video. Now I am much more like methodical about how I do things. I did make a 24 books to read in 2024 video recently. I have a list of those books on my phone and I was much more particular about the books that I picked. And I tried to pick books that I think I will very likely pick up. So this was my first year of booktube. You know, I was still a babe in the woods. And I'm very curious to see if I have read any of the books on this list. So yeah, this is gonna be fun. This is gonna be good. But what I'm going to do today is react to each of the books that I put on this list. If I have read them, I will tell you my thoughts on them. If I have not read them, I'll tell you guys why. I do have my laptop right here. So if you see me looking here a lot, that's what I'm doing. I guess let's just get started. I'm like weirdly nervous about this. I don't know why, but I think this will be fun. So let's get into it. By Madeline Miller. This book has been on so many TBR. Okay. <laughs> so right off the bat, we're doing Amazing Sweetie. Number one, I've never met this woman in my life. Number two, of course I haven't read The Song of Achilles. Of course I haven't read the first book on my TBR that I'm reacting to. Yeah, I haven't picked up The Song of Achilles yet. I specifically did not put it on like my 2024 TBR. I've put this book on so many TBRs. I am very like intimidated by it because I know I'm gonna love it, but for some reason I'm just like never in the mood for it. So I don't wanna pick it up and like maybe sway my experience. So I'm waiting for myself to be in the mood for this before I pick it up, but yeah. <laughs> I haven't read that. It's definitely a five-star prediction and I know that I need to read it, but yeah. Okay, anyway, let's keep going. The Twisted Lies by Anna Huang. This is the- Okay, <laughs> I haven't read the second book either. Twisted Lies by Anna Huang. I actually do really, really want to read this book. I feel more inclined to pick up this book than The Song of Achilles. I love Twisted Games and I love Twisted Hate. Oh my God, that's like one of my favorite contemporary romances of all time. And I know that I need to read Twisted Lies. I've heard really good things about it. And I also want to close out the story of the Twisted series. So we are 0-2 right now. So let's keep going. The book is Dance of Thieves by Mary E. Pierce. This is an enemy to lovers. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm so scared. I haven't read this either, you <laughs> guys. The reason why I haven't read this one though is there's another series by this author called The Remnant Chronicles and I just need to read the final book. They are connected and I've heard that if I pick up Dance of Thieves, it will spoil the ending of The Remnant Chronicles for me. So that's why I haven't picked it up yet. But this is a book that I think about a lot. This is a book that I think about picking up. I think if The Remnant Chronicles like didn't exist, I would have just picked this up. And part of me is like, I don't even know if I care to be spoiled for The Remnant Chronicles because I didn't really like the second book that much. That's my excuse for this one. Okay, oh, hold on. I, this is delusional. This is just me being delusional. Chain of Gold is like, the 76th book in the Shadowhunters world. I think that I put this on my 2023 TBR because it would make me read all of the other Shadowhunter books before this, because at this point, I think I had only read City of Bones, City of Ashes and City of Glass. So I was like, oh yeah, if I put like the last, one of the last books in the series on this list, then I'll read all the rest of them, which did not happen. I have made progress on the Shadowhunters books. I just finished City of Heavenly Fire like last month and I need to pick up City of Lost Souls soon. I would love to get caught up with the Last Hours series. That is the series that I'm most excited to read within the Shadowhunters world, but I am definitely not close to it yet. I need to finish the Mortal Instruments, then I wanna read the Dark Artifices and then I will get to Chain of Gold. So I think I was trying to be sneaky here and be like, I'm gonna put the last book in, or one of the last books in the Shadowhunter series on this list and that'll make me read them all. Well, didn't work, Rachel. So <laughs> let's keep going. We are four uh, books in and I have not read any of them. I'm already embarrassed. Okay. Book on my list is The Silver Serpent. Oh God. Okay. I have not read this book. I might have put this on my 2024 TBR. So this is the sequel to The Gilded Wolves, which I read in 2021, I want to say, and I really enjoyed it. I haven't picked this up yet, but it's definitely on my radar. 
yeah, that's all I have to say. I, I, have, I have nothing else to say, honestly. Let's just keep going. The next book on my list is a little bit different for me, but I just heard it's not good. so many glowing reviews of this book, and I know that it is getting adapted into a TV show, so I do want to pick it up, and that is If We Were Villains. <gasps> You guys, I've read this. Oh my god. Oh my god, I've read this. Killing it. This entire video is a success from this point on. I have read If We Were Villains and I loved it. It was so, so good. I read that in my vlog where I think it was the one where I read like books out of my comfort zone. And that's funny because I mentioned how this book is so out of my comfort zone. <laughs> Me mocking myself, love that. But If We Were Villains is a really great dark academia, a little bit of a thriller. The writing is beautiful. I love the story. I love the open-ended weirdness of the ending. And this was really good. So look at that, killing it. That was what, number five, I think? So I have 18 more books to go, but honestly, I'm so happy that there is at least one book in this video that I have read. But yeah, oh, I like that. I, I made this a five-star prediction for myself. I didn't give it five stars, but I did really, really enjoy it. Four-star book, really good. I've read it, we're killing it. This book is going to be Black Sunshine by Lena <gasps> Halley. I also read this one. Oh my God, wait, maybe we're gonna be on an amazing streak. Maybe the beginning of this video was just bad. So Black Sunshine is a paranormal romance. It's a vampire romance, and it is a little bit like contemporary. Like it takes place in modern day San Francisco and Washington, I believe. But I ended up picking this up earlier this year. I think I read it in a 24 hour readathon. And once again, really enjoyed it. Once again, gave it four stars. It's a really good, very spicy vampire, like paranormal romance. And I had a really, really good time with it. It was quick. I feel like Karina Halley has very like bingeable writing style. I'm glad that I read it and I'm glad that I put it in this video. The next two books I'm going to do together two. is volumes three and four of the Heartstopper series. I have read both of these. Again, I'm so excited. Volumes three and four, these were two of the first books that I picked up in 2023 and I gave them both five stars. So this is my first accurate five-star prediction. I love the Heartstopper series. I have the fifth volume, which just came out. I haven't read it yet though. I'm kind of saving it because I'm just like, I don't want to be caught up because then I think we have to wait a whole nother year for volume six to come out. But I really love Heartstopper. I've given every graphic novel five stars in the series, I believe. This is One True Love <laughs> by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Okay, I just unhauled this actually in January. Yeah, in January, right now. I unhauled it like last week. I have not read this and I just decided I wasn't gonna read it because this is a book that I mentioned a lot in TBRs. This is a book that I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna pick this up. And then I just never did. And so I decided to unhaul it. And like, I don't know, I like Taylor Jenkins Reid's books, but I am definitely more interested in the Daisy Jones and the Six and Evelyn Hugo books as opposed to just like her contemporary romances. It's just not something that really I think about a lot. It's not something I feel very drawn to. So I have unhauled that. I do not own this book anymore. This book on my list is Ninth House by Lee Hugo. <gasps> I have read this. Oh my God, I'm so excited. I read Ninth House and I really enjoyed it. I'm not a super fan. I know that this series has just like this cult following and people absolutely love it. I like it. My top favorite read from Lee Bardugo is still the Six of Crows duology. It is like one of my favorite duologies of all time, but Night House is really, really good. And I think it's super unique. I really like the writing style. I also enjoyed Hellbent. I gave both of those books four stars, I wanna say. I just think that the uniqueness and just like the craftsmanship of both of those books is just like so, so good. And Lee Bardugo is a genius. I really wanted to read this, I know, in 2023. Like I really, really thought about this book a lot and I ended up picking it up. This book on my list is The Kingmaker. Oh my God. I read this as well. Okay, yay. The Kingmaker by Kennedy Ryan. Actually, Buddy read this with Taya at Taya's Turning Pages. And I think we both really, really enjoyed it. This is sort of an enemies to lovers romance and definitely has a lot of emotions, definitely packs a punch. The ending of this book, the cliffhanger is insane. I haven't picked up the second book yet, but just because I'm like not really in a contemporary romance mood right now, but I did really enjoy reading this book. I love Kennedy Ryan's writing style. I ended up really, really enjoying this book. And I'm so glad that I read it in 2023. The next book on my list is The Heart of Betrayal, also by Mary Eaton. Okay, I have read The Heart of Betrayal, but as I said earlier in this video, I did not really love it. I really liked the first book. Like I almost gave it five stars. It was a really fun love triangle YA fantasy romance. And I was looking forward to the second book, but I just didn't connect with it. I don't know. I just, I liked how everything was in the beginning and kind of the unknown of it all, but something about the second book just didn't quite hit the same. So I think I gave it a three star. I am gonna finish the series. I am just because I only have one book left and then I will hopefully pick up Dance of Thieves, but I have read this. Wasn't crazy about it. Not a five star like I predicted, but it was still pretty good. Should have read by now, but I'm 100% going to be reading in it. Okay, I don't know if you guys heard that because I don't know how the sound is gonna be on this, but I just said, I can't believe I haven't read this book and I will 100% be reading it in 2023. 
I said that. I said those words. So let's see if I'm a liar. For you because I actually have it on my January TBR. It's Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Oh, okay. I did read this for a second. I thought it was um, the Jane Eyre cover because the Jane Eyre cover looks really similar to that. And I was like, oh my God. I did read Pride and Prejudice in January of 2023. I think I buddy read that with Sam at Sam Reads a Little. Yeah, I listened to the audiobook. It was really good. The Pride and Prejudice movie starring Keira Knightley is like my all-time favorite movie. I talk about it all the time. It's perfection. And I really enjoyed the book. I prefer the movie. I'm not gonna lie, but I definitely enjoyed listening to the audio. I essentially just imagined the movie in my head while I was listening to it. I really, really like Pride and Prejudice. I don't think I gave it five stars though. It was a four star. I really enjoyed it, but I don't know. I liked it, but it didn't give me the five star feels. Another Jane Austen book that I'm excited to add to this list because I do think I have a good chance of absolutely loving it is Emma. I believe <laughs> Okay. I have not read anything else by Jane Austen, so I have not read this book. I really do want to read all of Jane Austen's work. I own all of her published work, I'm pretty sure, but I haven't picked up Emma. And that is definitely a book that I thought about putting on my 2024 TBR, but I was like, you know, I don't want to put too many classics on there because the mood for classics strikes very infrequently. So I need to read Emma. I know that it's like kind of her funnier novel that she has, and I've heard great things. I also want to watch the movie with Anya Taylor-Joy because I really like her. So haven't read this one yet. Really hope that I will this year. Following the classics theme, I really, really want to read Anna Karenina. Okay. <laughs> Delusion. Delusion alert. I didn't read Anna Karenina in 2023. It's really long and intimidating and that's why I haven't picked it up. But it's just one of those books that like I want to read so badly. It's like a lifetime book. Like there's those books that I want to read before I die type of thing. And Anna Karenina is one of those. And I I don't know, I, I hear so many great things about it. I have friends who have read it and really enjoyed it. And I haven't picked it up yet. Once again, just because the mood for classics doesn't strike me too, too often. I am a fantasy girl pretty much through and through. And honestly, like as time goes on, my mood for contemporary romances is like going away. And like anything that's not fantasy related is kind of going away. So yeah, I have not read Anna Karenina, but I really, really want to. I also really want to watch the movie with my period piece queen, Kira Knightley. So that does kind of motivate me to pick this up, but apparently not enough because I still have not read it. Okay, I did read this and I didn't really like it. I gave it three stars. It's an adult fantasy. It is marketed as a fantasy romance, but I don't really feel like it's a fantasy romance because the romance feels very secondary to everything else that is going on. And I just didn't feel like a ton of chemistry between the characters. It was good. I don't think this is a bad book, but it just like wasn't for me. It wasn't my type of fantasy romance. And I was a little bit bored with it. So not a five-star prediction, but I did read it. So I'm gonna take that as a win. That I definitely want to read next year is Flawless by Elsie Silver. <laughs> okay, definitely read Flawless. Like it a lot. It's not my favorite book in the Chestnut Spring series, but I do really, really enjoy it. So I ended up reading Heartless first because I saw so many of the romance girlies talking about Heartless and I was like, okay, I'm just gonna read Heartless. So I read that, fell in love with it, went back and read Flawless, which is the first book, and I really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. And then of course I read the entirety of the Chestnut Springs series in 2023. After that, Chestnut Springs is my all-time favorite romance series. It is so so good. I don't think Flawless is like my favorite. As I said, it's probably in the lower lower tier, but I still really like it and it's where the story begins. The book that I want to read next year and I will hopefully give five stars to is The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker. Okay, I have not read this book and I DNF'd it. I did start this book in 2022 and I think I go on to talk about that. I was like in Montana on like a family trip and I picked this up. It was like, okay, but I didn't really have like much of an interest in picking it up after that. And then I don't know, it just doesn't stick out to me. It's just not a book that I like thought about a lot. And I was like, you know what? I don't really have a giant interest in this. I do also think it's on Kindle Unlimited. So I think it was one of those that's like, I don't really care too much about this book. I never think about it. I can read it on Kindle unlimited let me free up some space on my shelf i know a lot of people really really love it but it's just i don't know it was just it was just kind of there it just kind of existed for me and i didn't feel any pull towards it last three books are books last that three. i do not own and the first one is going to be a deal with the devil by elizabeth o'rourke so the okay <laughs> So the last three books in this list are books that I don't own, but they must've been like in my Kindle Unlimited library. A Deal with the Devil, I did read this. I'm pretty sure. I'm gonna check my Goodreads. I think I read this for a 24 hour readathon. Yes, okay, I've read it and I gave it three stars. I was not crazy about the writing style, gotta be honest with you. I've read another book by Elizabeth O'Rourke that I really enjoyed and then this one just didn't really do it for me. And I also kind of found, 
I just found the dynamic between the characters like not great. So I did read this, which is great, but I gave it three stars. So not an actual five star as I predicted. This book is The Name of the Wind by Patrick. Oh my God. Okay. I have not read The Name of the Wind. That book is so long and very intimidating. I, did I put it on, I'm going to check. I think I put it on my 24 books to read in 2024. I did. I sure did. So we will be talking about that book at the end of 2024 because I kept a list of my 24 books that I want to read in 2024 TBR. And I really, really want to complete all of the books so I can give like full reviews for all of them. But yeah, I haven't picked this book up. I contemplated picking it up so many times in 2023. I have a really beautiful edition that was gifted to me by Kara and I think the reason I haven't picked it up, number one, it's just really long. And number two, I want to love this so badly and I'm like intimidated by that. You know, those books that you just kind of put up on a pedestal and you're like, God, if I don't love this, what even is life? It just seems like one of those books that I'm going to love and I just hold off from picking it up. I don't really know, but yeah, I have not picked this book up. I didn't even own it at the time that I made this video, so I don't know what I was thinking. Okay, so I think we're on to the last book. So fingers crossed. I have read it. Right, and the very last book on my 23 books I want to read in 2023 is Angel's Blood by- Oh, okay. We are ending on a good note because I have read Angel's Blood by Melanie Singh. I read this- I don't know, maybe midway through the year and it was good. I think I gave it four stars. I haven't continued on with the series. I will at some point, but it just doesn't really like call to me. I enjoyed it, but I wasn't like, oh my God, obsessed. I need to pick up every single book. I think there's like 14 books in the series. This is like a mid 2000s paranormal romance series and it is one of Sarah J Mass's favorite series. And you can definitely see the inspiration in her books that she pulled from this series. Like that definitely reminds me a lot of how she writes romance and how she writes like angels and things like that. So yeah, I have read Angel's Blood and it was a four star. It was very good. I very much enjoyed it. So I'm really happy that we are ending on a book that I actually read. The beginning was rough, but we made it through in the end. All right, you guys. So that was a little painful but I had a good time. And honestly, it was really fun to like reminisce on one of my old videos because I never go back and look at my old videos because I can't watch myself. I don't know. I just have this thing about it. It was actually kind of fun to go back and look at what I said I was going to read and what I was planning on reading in the new year. And I read some of it. I read some, maybe I'll like, put up a count somewhere of how many books I read versus not. But I will say overall, even though I didn't pick up some of those books, the books that I didn't read aren't like out of my realm of interest. It's not like I picked up books that are like crazy and things I would never read. I definitely think that I, even though I did it very quickly, I did try to find books that I would enjoy. And I think still to this day, I would read a lot of those books. I just haven't picked them up. Well, there's a few that I did on haul, but you know, other than that, I do think that this was a pretty reflective of my taste then, fairly reflective of my taste now. I'm just less into contemporary romance than I was maybe then. But yeah, that was really, really fun. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I, I've never done anything like this before, but I thought it would be fun to look back at my previous self and see what I was in the mood to read. So if you made it to this point in the video and you wanted to let me know, go ahead and leave the star emoji. Please make sure that you're following me on Instagram and Goodreads. They are always linked down below. I really appreciate that you watched this video. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. I love you all so, so much, and I will catch you guys in the next one.